Hello, First Church family and friends, and welcome to worship. As we begin our time together, I want to take a moment in community and say thank you to all of the veterans. As a nation, we celebrated Veterans Day this past week, and here in this time of community, I want to make sure that we say thank you to the veterans in our congregation and community. Whenever it was, whatever um, time period you served during, please know that your service was not done in vain, nor does it go unnoticed. So thank you so much for all that you've done for us. Now, as we gather together, I certainly understand the Apostle Paul's writing to the Philippian church. At the very beginning, he says, oh, how I long to, I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And in these days, I really understand that. Uh, Paul wrote that when he was separated from his beloved Philippian church and couldn't get there um, at that time to visit with them. And certainly our circumstances are different, but uh, we are continuing to remain separated. And, and so my heart does long for you and, um, and to be in physical community with one another. And I do know and I trust that that day is coming. And so until that time, we do remember that we have a shared mission and ministry. We have a shared faith in Jesus Christ. And it is important for us to continue giving our praise and thanksgiving to our Lord. And so we're going to begin um, by joyfully singing together the song, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. And let it be a time when we truly do let our hearts adore Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. So God bless you as we worship.
Good morning, friends. This is Pastor Caesar. The first scripture reading from today is from the book of Psalms, chapter 146, verses 5 to 10. Old Testament, Psalm 146, verses 5 through 10. And the word of God says, Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, he is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreign and sustains the fatherless and the widow. But he frustrates his ways of the weak. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations, praise the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, my friend, close your eyes and let us praise together at this time. In the middle of this pandemic, we had a really nice week last, last couple of days. Now, call is coming. But at this time, I don't know if you are feeling uh, how people are struggling around. I don't know. I don't know if you are feeling how people is wondering and is afraid and is in panic about the pandemic at this time. Hospitals are overwhelming with cases. Hospitals are closing doors and sending other people to different um, health systems around the area because they don't have a space. 
So let us pray together. You and I can transform the environment. You and I, with our prayer, with our prayer, can change people's life. So I invite you this morning to be a prayer warrior. I invite you this morning to close your eyes and pray together our God because he is ready to listen to us. God is ready to work on a favor of God's people all the time. So let us pray together. Close your eyes. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, Lord, for this day. We're going to give you thanks for the great opportunity again to open our eyes this morning. We pray, Lord, for those people at this moment who are in the hospitals. We pray, Lord, for those people who are not feeling well. We are pray, Lord, as a warriors, Lord in your hands, and give us, Lord, the courage, and give us words at this time to, in, to pray, Father, for those people who are suffering, for those people who are not feeling well, for those people who are not have anything to eat at this moment, for those people who are struggling with mental health issues, with those people who are feeling depressed, for those people who are not who are feeling hungry, for those people who are feeling desperate, for those people who are not feeling, Lord, in the sight that you wanted. Father, thank you for our lives. Thank you for our, our homes. Thank you for everything that you give us until today. But today we forget about us because now, Lord, we understand that you continue to care for us, that you continue you to continue hold us in your hands. But at this time, Lord, we pray, Lord, for all the people that not are feeling well in any circumstances, wherever they are. We extend in our hands, Lord, and you can continue extending your blessing upon them. You can extend in, Lord, your healing hand upon them, Father. And please, Father, we pray that you can take their lives, Lord, and care for them. Help us, Lord, to be agents of transformation in this land, Father. Help us to not be judgmental people. Forgive our sins, Father. Forgive our mistakes because we daily fail in front of you. But at this time, Lord, we, with that forgiveness, with your grace, we can be agents of transformation, we stand up at the line, Lord, that can, people can see your love, that the people can feel your passion, that the people can feel, Lord, your grace, Father. Put in our mouths, Lord, words of transformation, words of hope, words of love to others, Lord, instead of judge others. Father, thank you for this church, and thank you, Lord, for this uh, faith promise weekend, Father, because with our resources, Lord, we can continue to provide, and we can continue to uh, give, Father, to other ministries here in our community, here in our country, and around the world as well. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for our hearts. Thank you for our families. But overall, Thank you for your people around us. And keep us, Lord, healthy and safe. Then you and I can transform lives by your spirit, through your Holy Spirit. Thank you. And together we pray that prayer that you taught us to say. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth and sin in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. And God's people say, Amen. God bless you all. Matthew chapter 25. Verses 14 through 30. Hear this word of the Lord. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey 
who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gave, gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought to the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever who has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It doesn't take a financial genius to know that in most cases, investing money is going to be to your advantage, right? Instead of stuffing your mattress with extra cash, uh, because now we can most likely get into a long discussion of what kind of investment to make, no doubt, um, perhaps debate on which one it would be better, but that's not the point of the day. The point is, is that um, regardless of any of that, the basic principle of, quote, putting your money to work is, as the scripture puts it, it indicates that at the end of the day, when that tactic is used, there is an expansion of resources, an expansion of what has been invested. In economic terms, the concept is called a money multiplier. We're not gonna get into that today. What we are gonna get into is how does, when we invest in something, when we invest in ministry, how that also expands. When we invest in each other, that too expands. When we invest in love and in faith, that too expands. This principle is not just about money. It is about how we do faith. That if we keep it all to ourselves, like that third servant in the story, it is not helpful, it is not productive, and it is not ultimately healthy. Even if we're afraid, even if we're uncertain, it is always better to invest. Jesus certainly makes that very clear in his story today to those who had gathered around him when he's talking about what the kingdom of God is like and, when, and what that day of the Lord is like. And he uses this illustration to talk about how that kingdom of God, everyone has been given something and it is best to invest it and expand it before the day of the Lord when the Lord returns. 
Jesus is always looking about expanding his kingdom. He used different other images as well. He talks about even a seed the size of a mustard seed is going to grow into a huge plant. Even faith that size, if it is planted, if it is invested, if it is given away, it grows into something more. This is a kingdom of God principle. This is exactly what happens when we give to the church, when we give to the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ to make things happen. And it's what happens when we give to church um, through the Faith Promise program that we've been celebrating. Today, uh, church member Kevin Williams is here to share with us more about one of those particular Faith prom faith promise projects that we support, which is our Summon to Serve weekend. So take a listen as Kevin and I talk about that ministry and um, the ministry that supported of kids around the world and how what we invest expands. So Mr. Kevin Williams, thank you so much for joining us today and uh, being able to share about our big Summon to Serve weekend. Um, now, I've only been here for not even a year and a half, so tell us and remind all of us, um, when did Summon to Serve start, and what started that? What was the vision for it? Um, can you tell us a little bit of that history? Sure, uh, Lisa, thanks for the opportunity. You know, it's been about uh, six, seven years now, I guess, that we've been engaged uh, in this Summon to Serve uh, outreach, and Really, this started as, uh, as, as good ministries always do, with just a couple of folks getting together and saying, you know, there's probably a way to reach outside of the four walls of the church and be engaged with both local community and abroad. And the idea was put forth uh, for the meal packing event, sort of coupled with the idea of serving locally in the community and really putting our hands on the actual physical needs of people, whether that be helping seniors in the, again, in the local community uh, or feeding children and families in need in far flung places like Haiti and uh, Uganda and other places where, where the food has been shipped. And really it sort of started off that way as well as uh, giving the, the congregation in total an opportunity to really do hands-on ministry. So often ministries are, are executed, if you will, by a smaller number of people, but this is one opportunity where the entire congregation could come together and put their hands on something uh, and make a difference. And that was appealing for a number of reasons. And so we sort of started off with a, a small number of, I, I believe, 25,000 meals and over the years, it's grown to 100,000 meals as well as the outreach into the local community. So that's kind of the background on how things got started. Yeah, so um, it, it's so exciting to, to witness. And uh, there may be people today who are hearing about this. And, um, and can you share a little bit more about when we, when we come together as a very large group, um, why is that important for the faith community? You know, speak to the size and scope of what we're able to do together. I think you touched on it when you uh, were talking about the amount of meals. Sure. Um, so I always remind folks that um, I, I think it's important that we both serve uh, and minister locally uh, and abroad. We're sort of living into the Wesleyan tradition of as John Wesley said, the world is my parish. Yeah. Uh, and so when we come together as community and do that, we're sort of living into that tradition. I also think it's important, particularly in this time, that we have an opportunity to be engaged in ministry and outreach, not only with people that live in our community and largely look and speak and act just like us, but we're also able to touch the lives of people who don't speak the same language, who don't have the same skin color, who maybe don't have even the same value sets, or may not even at this point be Christian, but mm -hmm. that we are able to reach out and, and touch their lives and make things better in a very basic way. And that's what our ministry partner 
kids around the world uh, in cooperation with churches, just like First Church. That's exactly what they do. And okay. so we, we see that happening uh, and we're able to expand our, our outreach you know, beyond the borders of our own world. And I think that's incredibly important uh, for all of us uh, who are engaged in ministry and called to be uh, servants and brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. So that's, that's kind of what we're about. That's exciting. Um, so we've been working with kids around the world to do this meal packing. Can you tell us a little bit more about this organization, um, their mission and ministry, how long they've been around, um, what's some of that background on our Summon to Serve weekend? Sure. Um, we uh, ran upon uh, kids around the world. Uh, they're out of Rockford, uh, by the way. Uh, we ran upon them uh, at the beginning because uh, they had an outreach and an engagement with local churches, uh, large and small, as well as other organizations. And really sort of the focus of their ministry is they go outside the United States uh, and they engage communities in need, uh, but they do so through the children uh, of that community. One of their primary outreaches historically has been taking and refurbishing used playground equipment here from the States, shipping it abroad and reassembling that to mm -hmm. build playgrounds for kids uh, in areas of desperate need in other countries. Uh, in, in addition to that, that sort of platform, if you will, to allow kids to be kids also gives them the opportunity to um, share the gospel with children. And as we all know, uh, children sometimes have the ear of parents and, and elders uh, much more than an adult would on a direct basis. Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of how they have built their model to spread the gospel. Uh, they take uh, small groups of people uh, from churches and other organizations to help construct those playgrounds and engage directly mm -hmm. with those communities. So it's a wonderful thing. Now, more recently, because of COVID worldwide, uh, they've been stymied a bit uh, in terms of their ability to, to, to build playgrounds and have some of those ongoing programs. So right now, they're, they're currently engaged primarily in delivering much needed food, like the food that we packed, uh, to communities in need. Okay. But, uh, but organizationally, they're, they're committed to sharing the gospel uh, through that, uh, through, well, through play. Uh, and through children. And I think that's just a wonderful way to, to reach out and share the message. And so the playgrounds, where the playgrounds are met, those communities, then that is a natural inroads to these uh, meal packs that we, that we put together, that that's how that meal packs get into a community? Correct. Uh, that's how they sort of engage the community. Uh, and they go to some places that uh, are very difficult to reach. Uh, by, by traditional means. So uh, I, I just couldn't, I, I can't say enough about, about kids around the world and how wonderful they've been to work with as a partner uh, and how much um, they do uh, individually and corporately to, to reach into these communities. Uh, you can go to their web, website, uh, kidsaroundtheworld.org, and look at all of the things they've been engaged in. Uh, and a big part of their story is sharing the story. Uh, they're big storytellers, uh, particularly with the kids. And as we know, um, that's exactly how many of us um, came to Christ as well. Someone shared the story with us. Mm -hmm. And so that's what they do. They share the story. And, and it, it's, it's so natural that I think that's why they've been so successful in, in, in spreading the gospel that they've been able to engage uh, in that story time with, with kids. Awesome. So um, just a little bit of the technical stuff. When we come together, and, and this year we packed separately in our homes, we were still able to do some of the serve weekend, but, but not as one big whole group of people all at once. Um, and, and we were each given these big, huge bags of rice and, and supplies to pack this. Where does all that food come from? Where do those big bags of rice and and uh, grains uh, come from uh, just logistically? How does that work? Well, so, so kids around the world themselves uh, have suppliers uh, for the rice. And this year, they actually had a benefactor who was able to offset some of the cost 
of securing uh, the rice and all of the other things that go into the meal packs, which reduce the cost to local churches like ours of actually packing meals. When the meals are packed, kids around the world actually warehouses that. Uh, okay. as, as we know, we write our you know, our, our time and our data on the boxes on the outside. And so then they, they set up the logistics then to ship that abroad uh, to their various uh, partners on the ground. And then they go there as well, not only for playground construction, but help in food distribution. So it all actually goes through their organization. It's more than just an administrative arm. They have hands-on uh, 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 collection, if you will, of the foodstuffs and then the distribution as well. <clears throat> sure. Well, you've given us a, a bigger picture of, of what happens before and after our um, one day of packing together and being in service to one another. And, and I think that's really important for us to remember that, that we're a piece in the puzzle, that we're just, you know, that we are a part of it, but an integral part of making that happen and helping to feed people. Um, uh, someone to serve and, and the and the money that we send to kids around the world is the biggest uh, recipient of our faith promise um, budget for the year. And, and it's no small amount of change. We, we uh, budget up to $25,000 to make this happen right. and pack 100,000 meals, which is just, just amazing. Um, so that's a really big once a year thing. How can we stay connected? You've been doing this for a while. How can we as um, individuals stay connected to the spirit of Summon to Serve in between August when we do this? Yeah, that's a great question, Lisa. And I think you, you phrased it correctly. I think it's staying connected to the spirit of Summon to Serve, which is outreach uh, both uh, locally uh, and abroad. So my encouragement, I think, to folks would be to, to, to stay connected in some way to a ministry that you can put your hands on and actually engage with people. Now, what we're doing is a, is a relief ministry right now, providing food and much needed services on a local basis. I'm always reminded, you know, when I think about that, um, of the passage from, from 1 John, you know, if we see, a brother or sister in need and yet have no pity on them. How can the love of God be in our hearts? Yeah. yeah and yeah. so my encouragement to folks would be find ways to engage both locally and outside the four walls of your own experience uh, with people who are not speaking the same language that you are or having the same skin tone or uh, even having the same value set. And there are a variety of ways and opportunities and agencies that we can individually engage with, but it's all really in my mind about making sure that we stay connected on a personal level with people. Sometimes we, we have a tendency or it's easy, if you will, to write a check and kind of forget about it. But when we engage in the lives of people, uh, that makes a huge difference. And I think that's what's been special about Summon to Serve is that we're engaged with our partner, kids around the world, even though we may not have each of us personally met the children who receive the playground equipment or the foodstuffs, but we've been engaged with them on a personal level. We've seen and heard the stories. We've seen and engaged with people locally in our community. We need to continue to do that. And that's kind of a personal responsibility for each of us mm -hmm. to seek out those opportunities to, as I like to say, put our hands on everyday ministry and make them. Amen. So one last question, um, Kevin, uh, to talk about is, um, we're looking at the passage of scripture today, which is Jesus's parable of the talents, which is different servants get a different amount of, of treasure by a master. Master goes away and um, and there are a couple of examples uh, from those servants who, who, in, who make an investment and one who doesn't. And, um, and then the master returns and um, does kind of an accounting of what, what did you do with what you were given. And um, can you just share a little bit about how do you see someone to serve accomplishing what Jesus taught in that parable? Yeah. 
you know, Lisa, I'm reminded uh, from the parable of the talents of a, a just sort of an old uh, phrase too. We live our life for ourselves, but we love for others. Mm. And so I kind of like to look at Summon to Serve and our outreach as sort of a love investment. Okay. It's, it's the things that we do to reach out and connect with other people so that they have a pathway and opportunities for God to do miraculous things in their lives. Amen. We see sometimes in our meal pack that, you know, towards the end when everyone's getting tired, I like to remind us all that we're doing something here that gives an opportunity for a child, a family to have another day of sustenance so that not their entire life circumstances can change because of the one meal that we packed, but that there's a, a yet another day where God can have a tremendous impact and change the course of their life. And we have to depend on, on God and others to do just that. But I think that's the important thing. So I sort of look at this as like our small love investment. We're, we're kind of like uh, the, uh, in the parable, maybe the, the one who received the two bags of gold. This is a two bag of gold investment that I think returns many things uh, greater than that, many fold, that we may not get to see personally, but we can have confidence is actually happening. And why? Because we have confidence in what God can do once we create an opportunity for him to do his work. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Kevin, for uh, continuing to energize us around Summon to Serve, for providing that leadership um, and um, giving us that opportunity to continue making an investment in what God has uh, given to us and how to change the world. So um, God bless you and uh, thank you for sharing with us today. It's been my pleasure. Thank you very much. So today, as we thank Kevin for reminding us of the importance of this particular project that we do together, um, funded through our faith promise, today I invite you to prayerfully consider Making a pledge to invest. Making a pledge to invest. Not necessarily right now we're talking about our church budget, although that is important for us to continue investing in as well. But today I want to invite you to consider pledging to our Faith Promise programs. You may have received a pledge card in the mail. If you are not on our mailing list, you can find one, or even if you are on our mailing list, you can find one of those Faith Promise pledge cards on our church website. Please think about that. Think about making that investment in God's kingdom. Think about what, what God has given you and how it can expand as you invest in Jesus's ministry. And so when you take that pledge card, prayerfully um, consider what you're being asked to do and say that prayer once again, Lord, how much would you provide through me that you would not provide to me if I am committed to pass it along through the local church for your mission? Because as the scripture shows us, passing it along, it assures a return. It expands the kingdom in this world and it expands the faith inside each one of us. So thank you so much and God bless you. Well, today we are encouraged in our Faith Promise ministry and, and those programs and, and encouraged in making offerings to that. I also want us to stay encouraged in our offerings to our church budget as well. Our church budget makes mission and ministry continue on no matter the circumstances. We continue to send forth the word of God to care for one another, to celebrate the sacraments, and to be a community of faith that, that is, is together to benefit to the world. And so for all the ways that you give, I thank you this day.
as we come to the time to close our, our worship together, just a reminder about our, our pledge to Faith Promise for the 2021 year, um, inviting you to take advantage of that. Uh, the other thing is that as we look to begin the season of Advent in a couple of weeks, we're going to do something called an adventure and invite you to come and pick up as kind of a step-by-step -step, uh, progression of collecting up the supplies for an Advent wreath for your family table. Um, we're going to start at the church and go from to, around to different church members and pick up different um, packages from each one, a, um, a devotion and candle and, and all of the ways to um, celebrate Advent together. And so um, take a look at your e-news and see how you can make sure to be involved in that. And so now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you all. See you next week.